What's up guys, main man Sui here, hope you're all doing awesome as always, and I wanted to do a video on a very interesting topic, um, a coaching, I, I get this, I've gotten this question a lot on my stream, but a student of mine worded it perfectly when he asked me at the end of our session, like, so you've been playing Tekken for 20 years, you know, and I see you stream it a lot, you upload to YouTube, you know, you, you take it seriously, it's your passion. How come Ni is that much stronger than you? What makes you such a scrap man and him such a god man? Like, what exactly is the difference between a player like you and me? And uh, I, this covers so many things. I tried to record an answer live on stream and I felt it wasn't very good. So I'm giving it another go today. And I'm gonna break it down into um, many factors here. But first off is maybe uh, the most apparent, like what's your outlook on the game? Are you trying to become a competitive player? Is that what you want to achieve? And that's very rarely been the case with me. Sometimes I've had, a few times it's happened, but I felt like for a month that, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna become a competitive player, but then that's not how I have fun with the game. I always come back to like, just I wanna play Tekken with friends sometimes play some ranked, uh, play characters I enjoy, and, you know, not take it too seriously all the time. When you're a competitive player, it's like every single matchup you need, you need die-hard focus, even if when you play ranked, because, or player matches online, because you have to dissect your opponents, the characters constantly, you know, and uh, uh, try to download all of it, and, um, that's not that much fun to me, so I, I try to not do that too much. Although, you know, I, I love this game and I try to uh, analyze it uh, to its core components, but uh, I could never uh, try to translate all of that to me become a competitive player, because that would involve me spending uh, countless hours with characters I don't enjoy too much. I, I just like to... Uh, learn the core components of those characters and then just stay away, not really lab them, you know, and get muscle memory, defense, and all of that. So it's a little bit on your outlook on the game, then it's also about hard work. Ni has put down a lot of hard work here. And don't get me wrong, I work really hard, but do I work hard at becoming a competitive Tekken player? No. I have fun playing Tekken, and then I work hard as a content creator, you know, a streamer, a, a YouTuber, uh, being a dad, I've just gotten into Warhammer, uh, you know, working out at the gym, uh, getting, you know, fitness is interesting. It's like we, we all, I guess, have uh, priorities and things we like to do with our time. Uh, and that's how I uh, prioritize. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm just saying, like, I, I've worked hard, but I've maybe more gone into the content creation side of things, whereas Ni is a content creator as well, but works really, really hard at, you know, uh, staying on top of uh, the competitive Tekken community, which must be, you know, super difficult. You've seen the competition. Um, so he works really hard. And then another interesting factor I want to talk about is that not everyone is the same. We all have different strengths. And not everyone is Goku. I know that, that's a reference you guys get. You guys love Dragon Ball. I don't. But you guys, if I put in some Dragon Ball names, you, you guys immediately get what I'm trying to say. Not everyone is Goku. Not everyone is, uh, you know, just picks up, uh, let's say, Tekken or a skateboard or starts painting and Within a week, they're like godlike, and you're like, what? What the fuck? I've been at, I've been doing this for six months, and you're already better than me. I, I know you've met such a person, or in university, you know, you you study for six months, you know, at school, and then uh, John shows up, hasn't studied for one minute, he's got a hangover, he was out partying all night, and you're you're like, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna top John on this test, and John destroys you. Because to him, it, it just all makes sense. Yeah, I, I'm sure you've met such a person. 
Let, let's say, let's say, set an example here to e even more so uh, clarify what I'm saying. Let's say I, I, I'm into fitness and I want to become a bodybuilder and I, I lift weights for 20 years or 15 years and I, you know, I, perfect nutrition and perfect training regimen. I do all the compound lifts, I rest a lot, I sleep, I do, I do everything that is needed to get maximum muscle development, you know, and stay in prime condition. I do all of that. Do you think I could beat an Arnold Schwarzenegger in his prime, in a bodybuilding contest? Or Arnold Schwarzenegger after only three years of working out? Even if I did all of the steroids out on the market, do you think I could look like Arnold? No because he, he, he is and was extremely genetically gifted at bodybuilding. No matter the amount of steroids you inject into your system, you're not going to get his muscle inserts or his perfect pecs or his huge peak biceps because you have your own genetic uh, foundation and you are your own person. Or let's say I've been playing basketball for 15 years. Do you think I could beat a Kobe Bryant or a Michael Jordan who, 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 been, who, uh, who played basket for like one year? Don't you think coaches could immediately see that uh, those guys were gonna become like godlike basketball players? They, they, they were just so talented. So that's why it's always interesting when people say to me on my stream like, you've been playing for 20 years, how come you sometimes lose to someone who's been only been playing for one year? And it's because you, you, you don't necessarily beat someone at something just because you spent a lot of time with it. You know, uh, I know a person who's been playing chess for 30 years, but I don't think he could beat the, uh, a chess pro who's 18 years old who's been playing it for three years. Do you get what I'm saying? It's like not everyone is the same. And again, how much did you prioritize getting better and competitive during those years you spent with it? And again, some people are just extremely talented. Uh, and I want to talk about um, my, my brother, Valentin, my, my, Valle, my younger, much younger brother. I was born in 85, he was born in 93. So he's eight years my junior. And as I was growing up, he and I loved playing Tekken. We played Tekken all the time from he was two years old. Uh, he, he, he played Tekken and when he was three years old, he beat everyone in my classroom at Tekken. Guys who had spent a lot of time with the game. Um, and, and, and you know, any game we played, me and Valle, Crash Team Racing, we loved to play. And then we started playing Dota in like 2003. And we played uh, Dota for many years and then Dota 2. Any game I played with Valle, he completely stomped me. Any game! He also stomped me in Tekken, even though I spent more hours with the game. And was much older than him. More developed, you'd think. Um, but he beat me in everything and it turned into this meme with my friends where everyone would just say the game is with him. No matter the game he plays, you're right, Adrian, main man. The game is with him. He's lucky, you know. Everyone got salty, everyone had this excuse, you know, as to why Valle was just smoking everyone. And I remember playing Dota 2 with him and he just picked up new heroes in one second. I could have played that hero, you know, for weeks. And then he plays one match with the hero and he outperforms me. And, and even opponents, you know, would say, the opposing team would say, God, that player, he, he's scary. Von Valentin was his name on Steam. I remember so many times they were like, he, he's scary, he's so good. Um, but, uh, and then something many years later, Valle would do well in school with math. And my dad was like, you know what, you should go apply for Mensa. And Vale goes to Mensa and they test his IQ. And he's, it turns out he's genius levels of IQ. He's above 145. And math to him is like, he doesn't study, he just sees it. He sees the logic and the patterns like that. Um, it's like when we did the SATs, like, uh, I, I'm not that, I'm okay at math, but I'm, I'm not very good at all. Uh, 
Uh, I'm okay at math, but I'm not very good at all. Uh, that makes sense. Uh, no, I, I, I'm one of those guys who has to really study, study, study math. But I take the time and I study. And this is Dragon Ball reference again. I'm Vegeta. I work so hard. I break my back, you know, studying that math. And Vala just shows up and aces it. You know, just gets everything correct. And you're like, oh. So that's what I'm saying. Like, not, not everyone is Goku. I'm Vegeta. I lift all the weight. But someone like Valle, who's just very gifted, he's smarter than me, he, he just picks up stuff so quickly. The, he doesn't play Tekken anymore, he gave up uh, as soon as Tag 2 was released, he hated the game, he just dropped the controller, cold turkey left the room, I was like, I, I'm, not, I'm not having this anymore. Uh, and I, I play a lot of Tekken, uh, the few times we, we play these days, it's very rare, I beat him, but it's mostly because I pick characters like Geese, for example, and he's like, what is, what's this? And he loses. And I'm, I'm a good Tekken player these days. I'm really good. But do you know what I know? A hundred percent I know this. If he got back on Tekken and played for about two weeks or a month, he would beat the shit out of me. If he took it seriously. He would beat the shit out of me. He's just so good with this stuff. Um, and what is Tekken? I mean, it's basically math. Comes down to the numbers. Uh, frame data. What do you think JDCR and Nii and Arsana have in their heads all the time? Frame data. And super quickly reacting to situation. I mean, hitboxes. This is basically interactive geometry. It's 3D models and hitboxes. How do they interact with each other? What is my opponent doing? Patterns. Pattern recognition. And guys like Valle, you know, and Ni, who's obviously also super gifted, and Arsan, is that they operate at such speeds and have such high levels of pattern recognition that before you even realize that you're being predictable, they can predict you. They can see what you're doing. Before it even occurs to you that, oh, maybe I'm getting predictable. They're like already on the ball. They're ahead of you. And, uh, yeah, uh, hard work, uh, absolutely, you know, work hard to achieve your goals. But certain people are just talented at, uh, at certain things, and we all have our strengths. You know, for you it might be, uh, you know, lifting weights, basketball, rapping, uh, being an engineer, being... Uh, or finding some very creative new solution for business models or entrepreneur, whatever. You know, we, we all, we play to our strengths. And again, with me and Valle, I've always been, uh, I guess, a bit better verbally. I got a big mouth, talking a lot. Always been good at explaining things to people. So when I'm being a content creator and talking to you right now, maybe I'm just playing to my strengths. You know, and, it, and you know, with Valle again, with my brother, I'm, I was Goku when it came to the verbal stuff on the SAT test. He studies like crazy and all these uh, really awkward words. And I don't study at all. I just go over and like, mm -hmm. can read stuff very quickly, analyze it and, you know, um, yeah, we, we, we play to our strengths. Uh, yeah, I hope that was interesting and the, the last thing I, I want to talk about as well is the fact that an offline community does so much. It's like, no wonder that Korea, Japan, uh, Pakistan are doing so well and dominating. It's because they have very lively uh, arcade cultures or offline scenes where, uh, you know, hundreds of people or a hundred people meet up and gather and exchange information and test each other's skills. And USA does really well in Tekken, also had an amazing offline scene, huge arcade culture. You know, we don't have a tradition in the EU and I think that does a lot. And it's like, um, you know, play, playing ranked and player match online, that's great, but that's never going to be a substitute for offline play. If you play online on a five bar, it's probably still got like one frame of delay. And that one frame is going to do so much. 
or, or, or a couple of milliseconds of ping. It does so much. It doesn't translate well to suddenly playing offline at a tournament. And uh, these offline communities, it's like, you have access to probably players who play every single character in the game and can just explain a matchup to you very quickly, uh, you know, face-to-face, uh, -face and you can ask questions. There's just, there's no substitute for that. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, I hope this was an interesting conversation. I think I worded it better this time than I did last time, so I'll probably upload this one. Uh, but yeah, I, I just hope you, you thought it was uh, interesting and uh, have a lovely day everyone. Take care.